Welcome to Login with NFTs for Keycloak. In this tutorial, you will learn everything from start to finish, how to set up the IDP kit locally and to configure it so that users are checked against the right NFT collection when they are trying to sign in using their NFT. The IDP kit builds up on the standards defined by OIDC, which means it can be easily integrated into SIPSIMs, which are also built up on OIDC standards like Keycloak. So you now can enable login with NFTs like login with Facebook and login with Google. I hope you're excited. So let's start building. Welcome to the IDP kit setup section where we now will use the IDP kit on our local machine. So before we get started, make sure you have the JDK 16 build environment and Gradle installed. So without further ado, let's get into it. So there are two different ways how you could build the project. It's one is Gradle and the other one is Docker. You can use whatever you want. I will go with Gradle build. So let's first clone the project. Let's go on to terminal and download it. Change directories. Perfect. So what's next? We need to set up a vault.yaml file. This will be used by the IDP kit to contact a node via Alchemy and then use the API key, which we also then get from Alchemy to talk to the blockchain and verify that the user who is trying to sign is actually an owner of the NFT collection. We will later be specifying in the IDP kit um, configuration section. So let's create the file. and open the application in our editor. Perfect. So for the configuration file, we can just use this default one right here and copy that into our project. So there are only two sections we worry about. The first one is the provider section and the other one, the API keys. So providers, depending on where your NFT collection is hosted, you need to update the correct chain. So in my example, it will be the Mumbai chain. And then we also need the API key. So that will be the HTTPS endpoint of the node. And that will be the API key so we can authenticate our request against that node. And the node endpoint we will get from Alchemy. So let's go into our account and create an app. Let's call it IDP kit. Then we use Polygon and the Mumbai network and create. Now, if we view our keys, we get the endpoint, which we can put in here. And we will get the API key, which we can put in here. So when that is all done, we can go back to our section and actually build a project and install all dependencies. So we will do that. Go back in here, open our terminal and run the Gradle install. Great, so the build is finished and now we can just try to run our... Yeah, first I always create an alias. So I don't I always have to go into the build folder. Um, let's do that. And then we can just run IDP kit dash H. Welcome to the client registration section where we will be registering our client with the IDP kit. When we do that, we will get back a client ID and client secret. Both those credentials will then be used by our client to make requests to the IDP kit. The IDP kit will then ask the user to sign a message, share their address, 
And then the IDP kit will use that information to validate that the user is actually an owner of that address. And if the address is also associated with an NFT of our specified collection. If that's all true, then we will get a success response and the IDP kit will provide the client with a secret, which then the client can use to request information about the identified user. All that builds up on the standards based on OpenID Connect. So if you want to go more deeply into that and understand how the concepts are built up and how the secrets are shared in between, you can go to a section and read up on it in our written tutorial. You can also watch a great illustrative video by OctaDev and also use the identity provision via NFT section in our docs to understand how things are translated from OpenID Connect will also be working with the NFTs. With that said, let's go back to our terminal and the IDP kit and register our first client. Make sure you have an alias set so the IDP kit, otherwise this won't work. Then go back to the setup section and create the alias and come back here so everything works fine. Let's go to our terminal and register our client. We will, using the client's register command, provide a name and a redirect URI. This will make sure that only client with the localhost 3000 can make requests successfully to our IDP kit, that's another security layer, so not everybody can just call our, um, our backend and register users. You can also provide a flag, allow all redirect URIs. In that case, there will be no limit and everybody can just call it if they have the credentials to do so. But we will be using just this one where we specif specify one redirect URL, in our case, the local for 3000 because our front end will be hosted there. And later we will be changing it if it's public. So let's run that command. And now we get back all the information we need, the client ID and the client secret are the most important ones we will be then using in a later section. Welcome to the NFT collection configuration section. In this section, we will be defining the chain as well as the smart contract address of our NFT collection against which our users who try to log in will be um, checked. So if a user is holding an asset of that collection, then the login will be successful. Otherwise, we will get an error on the front end. The configuration will be done in the IDP kit config JSON. So if we go and take this information and go into our project. And now in our config and the IDP kit config.json, we will find down here the default NFT token claim. So in our case, where I was using the Mumbai network, so I need to replace the polygon value with Mumbai. So the correct chain. And then I will be putting in my contract address. So if that's done, we need to rebuild the project. So I will just run that command. And after that, we can start the API and start with our front end. So that is done. And now we can just run the IDP kit. Perfect. Welcome to the key clock configuration section. We will be using the 18.0.2 version because there's currently a problem with the 19 version. You can always go into the written tutorial and check out the 19 version side and check if, if this error is gone. If it is, then you can simply use the 19 version. 
The great thing about the IDP kit, it is built up on the standards from OpenID Connect. And as Keyclock is one of those providers which supports OpenID Connect, we can simply integrate the IDP kit with it. So to get started, you need to make sure you have Keycloak running either locally or somewhere hosted. I have it locally running and therefore we can just go to the admin console. I've created a realm and under the identity provider section, we can now add one with the OpenID Connect version one value. So with that said, we can here change the alias with NFT and the display name also NFT. Then we need to import all the endpoints which will be used by Keyclog to get credentials and change out values with the Audi IDP kit. We can do that down here. So we go back in here, we see we can use this one and paste it in here. In order to work, we need to make sure that the IDP kit is running on localhost 8080. So I have it running here, so that shouldn't be a problem. We can simply go in here and import it. Now with that set up, we need to provide the client ID and the client secret, which we got during the client registration process of the IDP kit. So let's go into our admin console and scroll down. Here we need the client authentication and here we select the client secret send as basic auth value. And now we need to go to our IDP kit instance and get the ID secret. So IDP kit config YDC clients list. This will give us a list of all registers clients. I will use the last one here with the client ID. The client secret. With that set up, we need to tell the IDP kit that we want to use the NFT as method of authentication and that we provide with the default scopes. So if we go to default scopes, we provide OpenID and NFT token. Now the IDP kit knows that when we are requesting an authentication, it should do it via the NFT configuration. And the prompt be set to none. With that now done, we can create our provider. So let's just do that, save. One thing we need to check now is the redirect URI. So, so this value needs to be put in our IDP kit. So here we currently have a redirect URI white listed, which is HTTP localhost 3000, but we need to change it so that the, IDP, that the key clock instance can actually call our IDP kit and it would get through will not be blocked by the IDP kit. So we just copy that value and now go in here and type IDP kit, then config YDC clients register, then a name, which is my front end, then the redirect URI we just copied and because we want to update an existing client, we just copy this client ID, and put it in here. With that done, we now have updated it to point to the right redirect URI. Now we can go and connect Keycloak to our front-end application. Welcome to the next section. This time we will be setting up the front end, an XJS application, and then connect it to Keycloak. We've already created an XJS example project, which you can use as a starting point. 
We will be using Next's Auth.js as an authentication library, which makes it easy for us to connect our Keycloak instance. In order to use everything, make sure you have MetaMask or another compatible wallet installed. With that said, Node.js and Yarn needs to be in the machine and then we can clone the example project. Perfect, let's change the directories and open it in our editor. So first things first, we need to update some values in our environment file. But first let's rename it and remove the example. Perfect, so what we need, we need client ID, client secret, and issue are so those will be used by the next of js library which is found in the ipi of and then this fetch all route and here we simply just install dependencies and here we simply import the key cloak provider which is a built-in provider by next by next of and we pass it in this providers array and then our client ID, client secret, and issuer value. So the issuer value will be our instance and then the realm where we then now create our client, which will in my case be NFT. I have also have it running locally in, in the terminal here, so I can just use the local host. So now let's go ahead and create our client so in clients so the tutorial also is in the newer version i will be using the 18.0.2 version because the 19 version still has uh, some errors so in my admin i just can create now a new client i will call the id nft and it will be based on the openid connect protocol so let's save that then as an access type, we will set confidential. This means that the front-end application, Next.js, will need to authenticate to make um, authentication requests against Keycloak. Then we need to provide a valid redirect URI, which will come from the provider, so from Next of JS from the library, and is can taken from here. So it simply follows the pattern API of callback and then the provider, which is Keycloak in our case. And with that set up, we can just go ahead and create it and save everything. Perfect. And now we can take the client ID and put it in here and the credentials. Here's our client secret, which we can put in here. So with that, we can go now ahead and run the project and then visit Logos 3000 in our browser. Perfect, and now we can press the sign in button, sign in with Keycloak, we will be redirected to Keycloak, then we can press NFT, that will be then forwarded to the IDP kit. It will redirect us to a connect wallet page where we can now share our address which will be validated by the IDP kit and checked against the that we are an holder of an nft of the collection we specified earlier then we get redirected to keycloak which now wants some more information which we can just pass in and submit that perfect and now we are logged in you made it you just built a full-fledged solution for your users so that they can now sign in using their NFT. You've created the IDP kit locally, you connected it to Keycloak, and then you connected Keycloak to your front-end application. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't hesitate to show off your work in our GitHub discussion channels or Discord. I hope to see you around. Have a great day.